Welcome to Sisu Moi TV, episode two. I'm Alexandra Allfield. I'm Barbara Tyler Allfield. And we are the founders of Sisu Moi. And today we are going to be featuring a super positive role model for all women, one of our great friends, Stephanie Matera. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you for having me, ladies. I'm so excited to be here with you. Oh my gosh, we are, we are so honored. honored, and you are probably one of the busiest women we know, so thank you for your time and yes. being here today. Um, for those of you that don't know about Stephanie Matera yet, she's an incredible woman. Um, she's an educator in PR and communications. Um, she's a lecturer and instructor in public relations um, and, and communications at NYU and Manhattanville College. Um, she's an animal welfare advocate. She's an on-air host of Celebrity Catwalk TV, a spokesperson for the Mayor's Alliance of NYC Animals. She serves on the board of NYU Alumni Association. Something really incredible, she's been awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award for, from the President of the United States of America for volunteer services. So just an incredible person to have on the call. We are so honored. And, you know, Stephanie, we really just had a chance to get to know your story this year. My mom and you actually met um, with the yes. Philanthropy Circle. That's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah In South Carolina. Yes. yes, yes, we were at, um, I think it was a preview for the Pet Hero Award. Yes, it was, and it and was Stephanie, wonderful. It was, it really was, and you appeared in a white suit and looked absolutely <laughs> stunning. And Thank we you. didn't know who you were, mm -hmm. and we found out all of your expertise with dealing with pet welfare over the years. You were the president of Pet Philanthropy Circle. Yep. And, uh, you know, it was just great to meet you. And then later we got to know you were a little better at the Pet Hero Awards, where you were hostess. And that was <laughs> fabulous. Um, and then after that, we were on your show, um, yes. Celebrity Catwalk. And that was just this year. That was in February. And you were the yes. best hostess. You put us at ease. <laughs> Oh, thank you. A lot of fun. It really was so much it fun. Was. And your show is great. Thank so, you. I loved having both of you. You're inspiring to me. Thank you for all of those lovely compliments, but you're both inspiring to me. And I love that you're you. a mother daughter duo creating a brand that's going to really make a difference. So that's Thanks awesome. so much. Thank you so much, yes. Stephanie. I mean, we, you know, in our last interview, it's like we were girlfriends sitting on a couch just it having was. a conversation. And, you know, my mom and I left that and we had, we ordered takeout in New York um, and we were eating in our hotel room and we were just talking about what an incredible woman you are, you know, as a leader, an animal welfare advocate, mm -hmm. um, you're involved in so, so much. much. And really on the front lines of educating uh, for on animals' mm -hmm. behalf as well as people and the next generation. Um, so we thought this woman has a story. We would love to know more about kind of what got you here and maybe what sort of we all have challenges that, that we have to push through to get us where we are. So wondered if you could kind of share with us a little bit about how you got to where you are today. Sure. So... I had a very strong role model growing up, much like you and your mom are really close. I'm really close with my mom and, you know, she just always put education first in our home. So that really shaped me as an individual. And I also was really blessed to have incredible teachers that really took an interest in me as an individual. Um, and I, I never felt lost in my classroom. Like I always felt like they noticed me and I always was the kind of kid that uh, there were kids that didn't get noticed maybe they, you know, and those were the kids I kind of would take under my wing or stand up for. I never liked when people uh, weren't kind to maybe people that were vulnerable. Um, and then that goes with animals as well. Like that's always yes. been something that's really uh, hit me in my heart is like when people or animals are vulnerable and, Others are either cruel to them or exploit them. That's something um, also my mom set and as, as an example for me, you know, 
we used to rescue animals all the time. And so she would, <laughs> we had a new car and it was a big deal because, you know, my mom was a single mom and she just got a new car and she surprised me with it. And then in a couple of weeks, we're on 95 and there's dogs <laughs> loose um, <laughs> in the rain. <laughs> And my mom pulls over and it's like a tiny car and we fit three giant dogs in this car and they're muddy and they're standing on <laughs> the console between us and we don't know them and, you know, who knows if they're nice, but they were so sweet. And, you know, those kind of memories resonate with oh, you as a yes. kid. What a great what story. What a story. Yeah, That's the beginning it. of it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We can relate. I just can't be that person who sees something and doesn't do something, right? It's mm -hmm. like that quote, yeah. you know, you are someone, right? So if you see something, it's your responsibility. It's not the person after you that sees it. So I think those yes. kind of lessons are super important for people and, and they're formative experiences. They are. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, and it's such a, you know, interesting time that we're in right now. You know, it's June. So we're all yeah. still mid pandemic mm -hmm. and starting yeah. to come out of our dungeons, it seems like yeah. um, in our homes. But I mean, you know, action is such a big part of what's happening for the world. And, you know, as a lecturer and instructor, I'm, I'm sure, you know, you're, you're kind of seeing that mm -hmm. front hand. Um, in your classes, it's such a big part of life. It is. At NYU, we came up with this phrase, staying together as we stayed apart. And so very much like, you know, the three of us are being connected. We were physically together in February, but we're keeping that connection going and we're using technology to do that. And we've done that at NYU. And I have to say that it's interesting because sometimes students that are less vocal in the classroom uh, when they're physically present, even with the techniques to kind of get them to engage and, and, you know, vocalize their opinions, they're doing it more so sometimes in this virtual environment and they feel more comfortable. So I think, yeah. you know, that silver lining piece that everyone's talking about, and it may sound cliche, but it's true. Like, where do you find those silver linings through these challenges we've had and when things return to normal and they will right we've been through tough times in human history and we'll get through this and it's you know those lessons we learn let's not forget them right let's you know put them back into practice uh, when things are quote unquote back to normal so yeah yes. and I love how positive you are you know yes. and it's and as you know it, it's really a wisdom that is, it's an old soul quality, you know, to, to recognize that yeah. we haven't been through this before, but we will get through it and yeah. we will learn from it. And there, there's always a silver lining. There's always an opportunity coming out of something. Um, so I think, you know, sharing that funny story about the beginning of your welfare with, you know, for animals with your mom on the highway I think is really cool because, you know, your mom inspired you to mm -hmm. act and to, you know, as a single mom, you know, she's a, a strong female role yeah. model. Yes. yes. I exactly. Yeah. Fearless, really fearless. Yeah. And um, my mom is like very, very kind, but I always think of her as like the, a lion, a female lion, like, but yeah. go after the week and she'll, she'll roar, you know, <laughs> so right. I think yeah. you got to know when to, you know, enact your strength and yeah. uh, not be afraid to show it. And when it counts, you know, that's when you're tested is when it counts. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's so true. And I mean, as a woman in business like yourself, I mean, are you an, is your animal, are you a lioness too? <laughs> Is that what your soul animal is? Is that what? <laughs> no, I feel like maybe. Um, I know that, you know, animals have inspired me and their different qualities inspire me. So, you know, yes, there's that fearless, like when I need to protect, I'll roar. Mm -hmm. But then there's that, you know, compassionate, uh, calm, uh, kind person that, you know, I see that in like my dog Romeo, for instance. He's, you know, really gentle. His owner was terminally ill and uh, did a really selfless thing and surrendered him so he could get placed before the person passed away. And 
Uh, I never met the person. They didn't want their information shared, but mm -hmm. the story made its way to me. And he wanted someone who loved Japanese chins to rescue this dog. So I did. And this dog is so sweet. Like if you're watching a sad movie, he'll come over and he like puts his paw on you. Like he senses oh, sweet. everything. Oh He's so in tune, you know? And so um, being sensitive and being in tune to what's around you and what other people are going through mm -hmm. and not just being, you know, fixated uh, maybe on your own pain, but how can you fixate maybe on someone else's? And sometimes you find your own healing like through that. And so yes. animals teach us so many things um, that, you know, people are wonderful too. I don't want to be one of those animal people that only likes animals because there are those people too. Yeah. And I caution people about that because, you know, people help animals, right? You can't help animals without people. And so it's not either or, but I do think there's something innocent um, and more connected to God that we see in animals. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people may lose their way because, there's a lot coming at us. And I think our experiences sometimes maybe take away some of that, that childlike innocence that we yes. have were born. So, yes, that's a really good point. It yeah, is. I agree with that. And I yeah. think one thing that I love that you said, Stephanie, and, and what I was gaining from that is that you're present. So you're listening and animals seem yeah. to naturally yes. have that, you know, and yeah. so we, we kind of, as you said, there's so much coming at us all the time that you lose presence and you almost have to retrain yourself mm -hmm. to listen, be present, sense, and lean into something to, mm -hmm. you know, to learn from it. And that was one of my mom's questions, how have animals enriched your life? Mm -hmm. Life, because, <laughs> you know, one you of the answers. Yeah, yes. I think it's so true. And true. some people you know, like you said, kind of view animals above people. Some people are more old school and they're kind of, this is my dog. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, I'm the owner and this is my dog. And, and this sounds like a much more balanced, like an equal, we can learn and help each other. And, and I think that's a really special thing to share. Yeah. It's a healthy know. balance. Definitely. Yes, you need people. Like animals can't take the place of people, but I definitely think because yeah. people might feel judged and there's things they go through in their life that I think maybe animals, you know, love them unconditionally in a way. Maybe they wish people would, so they start to, yeah. you know, close off people, but you can't you yeah. can't do that. It's not helpful. Yeah, right. It's right. like, you know, the top memes and gifts and funny things are animals and babies. So, <laughs> you, know, they, yeah. you know, they teach us so they much. You yeah. yeah. And we all are, Definitely. are drawn to it. I mean, it, that's, you know, animals is there. It's one of our core causes and something yeah. that, you know, we all, we both have, mm -hmm. you know, multiple pets in our yeah. homes and, you know, what would you, one of the things that you shared with us, Stephanie, that I thought was really interesting is, you know, being such a strong animal welfare advocate, you know, it's a big deal. It's not just a cutesy, animals are cute and I'm going to go play with them and try to get them adopted one day. It's mm -hmm. like an a, ongoing life mission of the, of the nitty gritty that goes on with it. Mm -hmm. And yes. it shared that it, it's not always seen in such a like I'm a philanthropist for animals you know that's a people don't seem to fully understand what that means I wondered if you could kind of on that for those that maybe don't know about this yes and I think what you're alluding to is you know we had talked in a, a previous conversation about you know people sometimes not taking animal welfare seriously yes. or the people that love animals seriously and I think, you know, Gandhi said it best, right? It's like, you can judge a society by its treatment of animals. And I think that that is absolutely true or the most vulnerable, right? And so it's something to be taken seriously. And it's like the core foundation of kindness, right? And like a society starts there. If we can't even be kind to the the weakest members of our society, then we really have failed. And so I think if people looked at it uh, more in that way, and also as a lifestyle, you know, 
um, I don't eat animals. And I know now people are kind of getting hip to that. The movement kind of started in the 70s. There's yeah, some cultures yeah. that have been doing it for thousands of years, not eating animals. But, you know, right. maybe in the U.S. it's been since the 70s. But it's really picking up prevalence now. And I think thinking about your choices, you know, um, for me, you know, I don't want to eat something that um, encountered pain and, and suffering. I'm, I'm taking that into my own soul and my own um, right. energy. So I feel like that's something, you know, that I think about. And I've lobbied for animal rights and I've always tried to make it look serious. So when I would do a TV appearance or I would go lobby in Washington with the Humane Society of the United States, and by the way, I'm not special. Anyone can do this. Um, you can, <laughs> as a citizen lobbyist, it's not because I was a spokesperson for animals. I just want to make that really clear. Like, I sought this out. Every state in the United States um, has a representative from the Humane Society of the United States, and you can go with them and lobby uh, for animal rights. And they'll train you on what bills are on the docket that year so that you're educated when you go in. And sometimes you get to meet with your senators or your House of Representative mm -hmm. uh, members, but sometimes you meet with their staffers, but their staffers have their ear. So, you know, it's important to whoever you can meet with. Well, now that it's virtual, I mean, you can still write letters, you can mm -hmm. still send them social media messages. So I think that's really important. But I always used my education to kind of be polished when I was talking about animals, um, kind of change that stereotype. And I also dressed up, you know, yeah, I went yeah. on and I looked like the newscasters when I went on air with a cat or a dog. And I didn't, you know, I wanted to make it serious, not silly, uh, because it is serious. And mm -hmm. um, it affects everyone, you know, when animals are loose and stray and not being cared for, it affects the economy. It, it's not, it's just not good. So I think even if animals are not your cause, I think understanding they have a place and a value in society is super important. But I also think if it is your cause, if it's something that speaks to your heart, then there's always a way to get involved. You don't have to be a spokesperson. You can be a foster, you know, mm -hmm. you can rescue and adopt. You can, like I said, write your uh, representatives and your senators and there's something for everyone. But again, what speaks to your heart? Because animals doesn't, you know, it's not everyone's thing. But, you know, I've volunteered with other organizations like Glamour Gals, which creates intergenerational bonds between the elderly and college age girls and high school girls. That's another way to teach compassionate leadership. Yes. Rachel Doyle, she might be a great person for another segment. She's incredible. Uh, she's the founder of the organization. She started it in high school and she's in her thirties now. Um, and she trains thousands of girls all over the country. McDella Cooper, she's another fabulous woman. She created a foundation that built the first tuition free academy for orphans and abandoned children in Liberia. And she ran for president of her country last year. She didn't win, but that's still a win because she ran, you know, yeah. and she was one of my mentors. And so there's all these causes and it's like, what speaks to your heart and you will grow through giving, you know, and that's kind of what I did. I grew myself. That's not why I went into it, but that was what happened. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, you know, what you get out of it. You give yes. something, you get that out of it. Yes, yes, through giving. That <laughs> more than you give. I mean, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm in a soulful. I was feeling what she was saying in that moment. I love that. Yeah, I, I, everything you said there, Stephanie, I think growing through giving, yeah, as, as you I were saying. That. I mean, yeah. it's so true. And I think we really, that's a major wisdom, you know, mm -hmm. when you are down or you, you know, like you mentioned, she didn't win the election, but it was already a win because she ran mm -hmm. and, you know, she, she was honoring herself, honoring her strengths and pushing through, um, to get there. So it's already a win, but you know, when you are down to realize I don't need to be upset that I'm not getting what I want. It's mm -hmm. about giving out mm -hmm. and connecting through right. opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, there's the saying like this or something better. 
You know, sometimes no's are gifts from God. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Believe me, I'm not perfect. I get impatient. I'm human. Um, And I'm like, why not now? You know, but you have to kind of just honor your journey and kind of just say, hey, God delivered me before. He's going to do it again. You know, so I think that's the attitude to have. And I, I also think when you try something, you activate it in someone else, right? So you know, Mm -hmm. McDella Cooper ran for president of her country. There were other women, young women looking at her, right? So that activates that, oh, wow, someone like me, right, did that. I could do that. And, you know, for me, I I always loved animals, but I never knew I could be a spokesperson for animals until I saw Beth Stern. I went to a Lord & Taylor event. I think it was over 10 years ago. And I literally was there with this dog. I used to walk in grad school because I, my apartment didn't allow a dog at that time. And I was really craving a, a dog. So I just would walk this dog for these people that lived in my neighborhood. And I'd put all the money they gave me as the walker, like back into the dog. Like I would just buy it stuff and <laughs> take it shopping, take it to the city. And then let me take this dog to events. She became like my surrogate dog. And so I went to this event and I saw Beth Stern gorgeous and she was like speaking for animals not that you have to be gorgeous but she was like polished you know like she just was like beamed like a radiant light and she was like all about the animals and so genuine and I was like I could do that and I literally remember saying that and it was like maybe a year later I be actually became a spokesperson for the mayor's lines for New York City's animals wonderful you know she inspired me I did tell her that too and you know so that when you're doing something and it's hard, remember that someone else is looking up to you and yes. you're going to create a ripple effect of change and inspire other people. And I think that's really important. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. yes. That's a very good um, way to really conduct one's life. Yeah. You know? And it's a happy way. Yeah. And it's, you it's know? a, it's a lioness courageous way mm-hmm. because <laughs> take courage to it take, does. you know, to stand yeah. up and to try something new. You found Beth Stern on Instagram, right? Yeah. For years. Yeah. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. And she's, she's amazing. They take in all these cats and <laughs> sad stories and wonderful stories and they keep going. And I mean, it's fabulous. Yeah, and what she does is hard because she pours, she really pours her heart into the animals, yeah. and most times it works out. But she still has that grieving, right? That loss of like you took care of them, and even though you know they're going to a good home, it's like it's consistent connection and loss, connection and loss. And I, I don't yeah. think people realize how that compassion fatigue is. It's hard. It's like really hard, but she does it with such grace. She does it, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. very hard because we know if yeah. we have pets, when we lose our own pets, pet, mm-hmm. you know, one or two, maybe in a lifetime with many people, how difficult <laughs> that is. So, I mean, this is a constant cycle that, you and some know. Some people never have a pet through. again, 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 right. because of the loss. I know so, like that. Yeah, yeah, I know some people too but they give so much they you know? do and you learn from each one and it They're is all different they are mm-hmm. and one of the things that I think is really cool Stephanie that we continue to see with you is you're a female leader and you're positive and you push through mm-hmm. and I think we need more of that yeah. you know a, a you know a just you complimented Beth Stern. You went up to her, you didn't even know her, and you said, hey, you inspired me. And it's kind of like paying it forward through encouragement of that ripple effect to encourage yeah. her to keep pushing through when she has compassion yeah. fatigue. And, it's true. you know, and you should totally, I, I hope you keep in contact with her and say, look at me now and look at what I'm involved <laughs> in. And it came from you. And I, I, I would love to see more of that because as life does get hard or it's compassion fatigue or it's a letdown or as you said, mm-hmm. God didn't give you a chance on this opportunity and it was a no and you're crushed by it. You know, if somebody else said, but you know what? You inspired me. Mm-hmm. And because of you, it might have been a fail to you, but it was a win overall for everything. Oh, nice. This mm-hmm. happened. You know, yeah. if people kind of shared that, I think it could help push people through. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. I think that you just hit something so profound because, you know, with every stage you go to, I, I if, you know, the song's like, oh, if, what I could tell my younger self, right? So like your childhood, your teen years, mm-hmm. let's just college years, 30s, 40s, like each generation and, and on. And we never stop growing, right? So right. it's the things that you accomplished, like if you told your younger self, they would have thought that was like, you could never do it, right? It just seemed too insurmountable. But then when you achieve it, it just sets that bar that much higher. So I feel like there that risk and reward and that also like, um, you know, almost like even more disappointment because as you get you get more things that you work for, you set your bar higher and you have kind of further to fall. Um, and that's something like I go through, like I turned 40 um, in November and I'm, you know, proud of it. I know a lot of people hide their age or they want to ask you your age. You make- own it and you look yeah. 20. Yeah. I mean, like, really? honestly. No Botox either. <laughs> for you. All natural Not beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm opposed to Botox, but I haven't done it yet. But I think if you le- live a clean life, you know, like, I don't drink a lot, like not that I wouldn't have a glass of champagne here and there, but I, I don't drink a lot. I don't smoke. I, I don't eat animals. I yeah. try to live a Christian life to the best of my ability, but for everyone out there, Christians are not perfect. We recognize we're not, and that's why we, we need Christ and we need God. But you know, those things, I think you kind of come out of you, it shows, right? So Absolutely. That's, that's yeah. really about le- leading like a really, you know, good life. But, you know, when you turn different ages, you know, you go through different struggles and different journeys. And, you know, and for me, I have to continuously remind myself to be inspiring to others because I have a lot of people looking up to me in my classes yeah. mm-hmm. and, yeah. and remember yeah. that, you know, I have a, maybe right now, you know, sometimes you're kind of like, you take a backseat to your own needs to fulfill other people's needs, yeah. but you have to kind of balance that, right? So it's like a give and a, and yeah. then kind of reset, recharge. Yes. And, you can't constantly do that. It's not um, sustainable. Right. So that's one thing I've kind of had to learn over the years and grow through. So that can be difficult. Yes, <laughs> it, it yeah. can. But you have to keep that balance for both of you, for the people you're helping, and for yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, to keep going. That's very, yeah. that's so difficult, but you do it so well. Yes. I try. I try. And again, it's, it's not about perfection. It's about continuous growth. Yeah. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, there's times when, you know, I think of gardening, right? Like you plant something, you're not going to see it. You know what I mean? Right away. And I think we have to think like that, right? Sometimes yeah. there's seasons where it's a little bit drier and we're like, mm-hmm. we're sowing for the reaping. And I think yeah. thinking of that kind of mindset is a good way to train ourselves to kind of ride those seasons because yeah. we have different seasons in our lives. And then there's unexpected tragedies that happen. Um, right now our society is, is hurting, you know, globally yeah. and here in the U S yes. and there's a lot of positive change that's going to come out of it though. Right. So it's, you know, sometimes people need to grieve and we need to be heard and people need to be validated and mm-hmm. we can yeah. grow through that and become better. And I, and I think our country is going to do that. The U.S. will do that, but it's going to take time. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, it, it all started with your mom on the highway with those three dogs. And yes. literally yeah. that funny, adorable story shows an action mindset and yeah. leaning into a challenge and yeah. an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And it's something, Stephanie, that you have taken with you, obviously, through your life and yeah. staying grounded, staying clean in the way that you live your life and how you educate yourself and lead others through education. And I think growth through giving is literally like what we're going to call this episode because (laughs) it is I love I love love that you shared that wisdom because it's so true you know that giving needs to happen more and Mm -hmm. you know giving is such a big part of Sisu when we interview Mm -hmm. Sisu leaders they're all giving you know they're 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 enriching Mm -hmm. others and themselves through the opportunity of life so 
We're just so honored, you know, that you took some time today to share with us. Yes. We can't wait to share this interview with our network oh, and, yes. and eventually hang out when we can see you again. <laughs> I, I, I can't wait. I can't wait for that. And, and just to, you know, talk about what you just said one more time, your brand is doing that too. You know, Sisu Moi is giving back as well. Thank so you. I, Thank you. And I hope your brand grows through giving. And I think. Thank it, you. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> such a so great much. blessing yes, to leave with and grow through giving and yeah. Just love all around for you, Stephanie. You're a wonderful yes. person. And thank you so Sorry. much for your time. Yeah, we're honored. We're honored. And thank you all for watching. It's been our second episode of Sisu Moi TV. And looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye. 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 <laughs>